There's been a lot of discussions at the global level between governments, both in terms of reaching agreement and the Paris Climate Change Agreement, and also the Sustainable Development Goals. But what's really important is that we have regional voices because we share a lot of the same issues in Asia Pacific and countries can really learn from one another. But even more important, it's not just about countries, but how you engage with the NGOs, universities and the private sector. I think the reason that Indonesia chose this theme is because they understand just how critical the livelihoods of their people are. And we also know that you can't protect the environment without thinking about economic pathways. And so I think it's incredibly relevant to where we are in this debate and how we need to move forward. Blue carbon, so this is the mangroves, tidal marshes and seagrasses, are incredibly important, both in terms of how much carbon they store, but also the resilience in those ecosystems and the livelihoods of the people. So I think it's, it's been an overlooked area for a number of years, but it's really come into prominence, just as you were saying. In the Asia Pacific region, we know that six of the countries actually have some of the most significant mangroves and blue carbon ecosystems in the world. And for Indonesia, it's actually 23% of the world's mangroves. And in Australia, it's 10%. So this is an incredible natural resource that we need to protect. And again, to think about ways that we can sustainably conserve these environments. I think we all know the stats about forest loss, and that's a really significant issue. When I think about it, it's about impacts on people, where we're losing the biodiversity, but also the climate impacts. So some of the biggest issues though is how are we going to reach different sustainable development pathways? How are we going to really protect people? And how are we going to find those new innovative economic ways to do development? So they're the sort of big issues in terms of how are we going to take this forward in the Asia Pacific. So Australia initiated the Asia Pacific Rainforest Partnership in 2014. We had the first summit in Sydney and from there it's just grown from a, a really big summit in Brunei and now over 1200 people joining us in Yogyakarta this year. The reason that we um, initiated the partnership is that we understood that in our region so many countries share those similar challenges and that we have to learn from one another. We also know that political leadership is critical and having ministers and ministers like my minister Josh Frydenberg and Minister Siti Nubaya show that strong leadership sends such a positive message for all the NGOs and private sector to get on board and continue to work on this really important issue.